This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. I know that when we're betting early on during an NFL season, there is an aversion to, to an overreaction. We want to make sure we're not overweighing two games of sample and ignoring what we thought about a team coming into the year. And that's important to do because we can't overreact for sure. But it's also important not to underreact. We don't want to totally cast aside the two-week sample just because it is a two-week sample. A two-week sample is better than speculation during the offseason. So what we've seen so far does actually matter. We want to make sure we're properly accounting for that and not underreacting to what we've seen so far. And as I look ahead to week number three in the NFL, I kind of think there are some spots where there is a bit of an underreaction to what we've seen so far. Our job today is to dive into those week three lines, take a look at where I'm seeing value initially at FanDuel Sportsbook, and take a look at my updated power rankings based on week two and let you know who is up, who is down, which futures may stand out over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Welcome on into Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research here to dive in to my power rankings coming off of NFL Week 2 and taking a look ahead at week number three's lines and totals and letting you know where I'm seeing value for this week based on FanDuel Sportsbook's odds. We'll dive into all that here beginning with the futures discussion in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We are with you Monday through Friday talking both NFL and college football. College football on Wednesdays. Kent Padgett will join us tomorrow here on the show, breaking down his thoughts on college football week number four. We've got some uh, NFL coming up Thursday, Friday for you as well. To get those shows as they are posted, search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. And also, don't forget, we are on the FanDuel YouTube page as well shout out to all of you watching youtube right now leave us a thumbs up there we appreciate all of you as always football is back and there's no better place to get in on the nfl action than fanduel america's number one sports book because right now all customers can bet five dollars and get a three-week free trial of nfl sunday ticket from youtube and youtube tv then you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. Plus, with FanDuel, you don't even have to leave the app. Tax as real time stats and data to help you make even more winning bets. Download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Must be 21 plus and present in select states or 18 plus and present in DC. Offer ends 922 24. After a three week free trial, the full price of NFL Sunday tickets will be automatically charged seasonally. Cancel any time, no refunds. Terms, restrictions, and embargoes apply. YouTube TV base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Redemption requires a Google account and current form of payment. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat connected. Visit MD Gambling Help at Oregon, Maryland. Hope is here. Visit Gambling Helpline MA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y in New York. Now, I want to begin today by talking about some power rankings because I've got my own power rankings. I have uh, two separate models that I run and then also an in-season version of both those models. The one I use for betting is uh, includes a prior, so looks back at my preseason expectations for teams, then weighs in the data we've had so far a little bit as well. But then I do have a 2024 only version as well, which can kind of give me a glimpse, glimpse at Who's playing well so far? If I ignore the prior, that part specifically does not go into the model, uh, but I like to look at it at times, kind of get a read on where things are at. And these power rankings I'm going to discuss here do account for week three injuries. So Green Bay will be lower than you'd think as a result. Miami lower than you'd think because I'm using these to bet week three more so than betting in the futures market. But did want to do a quick check-in with the New Orleans Saints based on what we've seen from them so far. If you listened during the offseason, you know my model was high on the Saints all offseason long. And the problem is they've very much validated that, which is a scary, scary feeling. So we've got a high prior combined with great in-season data on them. So my inclination would be, okay, I want to be skeptical of the Saints, want to make sure I'm not being overly high on them. But... 
I do still think that there is potentially some value out there on them. Uh, we'll talk about their line for week three specifically in a second, but they're 33 to one to win the Super Bowl. They're plus 155 to win the NFC South. I think there could be value there. NFC South. That's a little bit tougher because the, the Falcons did get that win last night. Bucks are also two and oh, so maybe you don't want to buy in there. And as far as Super Bowl goes, it's hard to envision Derek Carr hoisting the Lombardi Trophy, given all the guys he'd have toppled to get there between Mahomes, Allen, maybe Burrow getting up there at some point as well, Jalen Hurts, all these guys. That's that's tough to see. So I have not bought in yet there, partly because I have alt win total overs for the Saints and their uh, NFC South divisional title futures as well. So don't want to be overexposed. But 33 to 1 was long enough where I didn't immediately discount it, at least. When looking at my power rankings, though, the team that stands out most to me and surprised me the most is actually the Buffalo Bills, plus 950 right now to win the Super Bowl this year. And they have looked awesome to open 2024. They're a 0.33 EPA per drop back and early downs, according to number fires data. They're a 0.13 EPA per rush. Both those numbers are really, really good. The one flaw the Bills offense has had so far is that their late down efficiency has not been great, but that's not what you typically expect from Josh Allen. Josh Allen, because he can run on late downs, typically has offenses that go bananas as far as success rate goes late in the down. So I think that that number, that late down success rate number should improve as the chemistry Allen has with his pass catchers gets better. And the run game for the Bills is really, really fun. Maybe annoying for DFS players, given they're not throwing a whole lot, but aesthetically, the run game for the Bills is very, very good. So I actually am kind of buying into what I'm seeing here with the Bills. They're plus 950 to win the Super Bowl. They're minus 140 to win the AFC East. And I honestly don't hate either of those as things stand right now with the Jets being one and one Patriots one and one Dolphins dealing with injuries. There's a lot of things lining up for the Bills once again. If I look at the one model again after counting for injuries, San Francisco is actually uh, still number one in that one, but the Bills are two. So they're ahead of the Chiefs. Not sure how I feel about that personally, but I do think it's noteworthy how good the Bills have been so far this year, and they're doing it in a very sustainable way by being good both through the air and on the ground. So I am willing to consider betting the Bills plus 950 doing the Super Bowl based on what we've seen so far, based on the prior and based on the fact we're buying into Josh Allen, a guy who should improve as the year goes along based on improved chemistry with his pass catchers. So the, I think if I'm looking at one future I want to snag right now, I think it might wind up being the Bills to win Super Bowl plus 950. A team that I'm still relatively okay with is the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I don't want to buy into them this week because they're playing the Bills. And if I'm high on the Bills, higher the market there, probably not the best time to buy into the Jags. But the Jags probably should have beaten Miami. Trevor Lawrence struggles in the rain. So we saw that last week against the Browns. And even when you include the 2024 data, the Jags are actually ninth in one model and 11th in the other. So. That's probably a bit high. I was high on them coming into the year too. So maybe that's part of the reason why they're still up there. But even looking at just the 2024 data, they haven't been that truly bad. 22nd there. So I haven't downgraded them a whole lot based on what we've seen so far this year. I'm guessing my model will want to bet them in week four against the Texans just because people are very high on the Texans. I like them too. And they're very high in my, my power rankings as well. But I'm probably going to be on the Jags for week four. And if I'm high on them in that game specifically when they're likely 0-3, I might want to buy into them in the futures market as well. Specifically, to make the postseason, they're plus 270 right now. I'm not going to bet that because, I, again, I do think that will lengthen if they lose the Bills this weekend. But I do expect that I will be buying into the Jags at some point down the line. So the loan bet for me right now in the futures market is going to be the Bills plus 950 to win the Super Bowl, but monitoring the Jags and likely to add them to the bet slip next week to make the playoffs plus 270, likely going to lengthen after that Bills game next week. With that in mind, let's turn our focus towards week number three and see where we're seeing value in the initial spreads and totals over at FanDuel Sportsbook. 
And I want to begin with a team that has looked really, really good so far this year and actually leads the league in early down passing efficiency based on my numbers. That team is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are at home taking on the Denver Broncos on Sunday. And the Bucs favor by six and a half, minus 115 to lay that. But I do think there is value in the Bucs at this number. I mentioned the, the Bucs leading the league in early down passing efficiency. Denver is tied for last with the Giants right now. And this is really impressive for the Bucs because going back to last year, they kind of had some devil magic on late downs where they were really efficient there despite being kind of inefficient on early downs. This year, they've been really, really good, and they haven't had to bail themselves out late in the downs. Now, they have done that. Their late down efficiency has still been good, and they haven't run the ball well yet, but I'm impressed with what they've done on early downs under Liam Cohen. The Broncos, understandably, are struggling, and now they're not going to have tackle Mike McGlinchey for this game either. The defense has been fine. I think they look better, too, once you see how well Seattle played in Week 2. But now the Broncos are going on the road, facing a team that has cooked to open this year. It's a rebuilding year for the Broncos. You know, the struggles are okay and expected, but I don't think we should expect those struggles to stop in this specific game. The Bucks defense, been about average so far, which is fine by me. So we're laying six and a half, which means we get a win on seven. It's a very low total game, but I do show value in the over as well. So I'm fine continuing to buy into Baker Mayfield, buy into this Bucks team based on how good the early down offense specifically has been so far. So my first bet for week number three is the Bucks minus six and a half, minus 115 as they take on the Broncos for this week. The second bet is one kind of alluded to earlier on. Now, this is the Saints taking on the Eagles. Before yesterday's game, the Saints money line was as long as plus 115, which is where I took it there. And now with the Eagles loss on Monday Night Football, the Saints money line is minus 126 and they're minus one and a half at minus 115 to cover in this game. I still think there's value in the Saints and I couldn't quite get there 33 to one to win the Super Bowl, but I can bet them minus one and a half here at minus 115. Mentioned before the Bucks leading early down passing efficiency, the Saints are second and that's while being able to throttle down for the second half of both games so far. Maybe that means they eventually regress, but I do still think there is value here as of right now. We saw the Eagles on Monday night. They struggled to move the ball through the air. Likely no A.J. Brown here either. Potentially no Marshawn Lattimore for the Saints. Didn't play last week, but it does sound like he was closer to playing than A.J. Brown was. The Saints' rush defense will be tested here because they haven't faced a legitimate running back yet between the Panthers and the Cowboys or a quarterback who runs the ball a lot like Jalen Hurts will, and he looked really good running the football on Monday as well. So maybe the Saints' defense will be stressed more than usual, but I think they can shred the Eagles on the ground. Eagles' rush defense was bad last year. Early data on it this year is even worse, which means it could be a big game for Alvin Kamara. I don't see the Eagles defensive line suddenly giving this underwhelming Saints offensive line fits. They've been able to navigate around that offensive line so far, and I've got faith they can do so once again here. Plus, you add in short week for the Eagles, bad vibes after that uh, loss. Those don't hurt things by any means. The model doesn't care about vibes, understandably, but it still is the Saints as a big value here, even at uh, minus 126 to win. Mentioned before, I took the Saints at plus 115 yesterday. It has moved a lot since then, so it may look like an overreaction, but it was a value then. It's a value now for me, and I'm willing to take it here. Lay the points. Minus one and a half is minus 115 for the Saints. I do think that is a good value at FanDuel Sportsbook for week number three. So the two spreads at like Bucks minus six and a half and the Saints minus one and a half, both of those sitting at minus 115. Couple of totals I like as well, one of which is in a very, very big game. That is between the Dallas Cowboys and the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday afternoon. Total in this game, 49 and a half. So a really big number. And I think that's a bit too high for two very respectable offenses. I know the Ravens, or defenses, I should say. I know the Ravens have struggled defensively so far, and now they're going on the road. They get to play indoors in this one. But it's a big number. Kind of thing Micah, Micah Parsons might put in some work in this game because the Ravens offensive line had a lot of changeover and is still trying to gel, it looks like. And I do think the Ravens will be able to move the ball on the ground. So that's one thing working in their favor here, which leads to efficiency, but it also does keep the clock moving. Still a relatively fast game compared to others, uh, at least based on this year where pace is a bit lower overall. 
still a fast game, but we can keep the clock moving if the Ravens can move the ball on the ground, which I think they should be able to here. And the Cowboys have had two super high scoring games so far. I think it was 33 17 in the opener, of course, led up all those points to the Saints in week number two. But a lot of weird, huge plays in both those games. The Camara run with Sluki, the Rashid Shahid touchdown. Don't see anybody on the Ravens being able to do that either. If we don't get those massive fluky plays, I'm not sure we see the big point totals we've seen so far in the two Cowboys games. It should be a very fun game. I'm looking forward to watching it, but I don't think it'll be quite this high scoring. It's the biggest value on the slate for me is taking the under here. So we'll take that under 49 and a half minus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook for the Cowboys and the Ravens. Final total and final bet I want to lock in for week number three is also a Sunday afternoon game and a lot of injuries on the offensive side here as the 49ers take on the Rams. That total is 43 and a half at minus 115. That total has come down two points from what was yesterday. And it makes sense because there's no Puka Nakua, no Cooper Cup, um, no Christian McCaffrey, no Devo Samuel, more injuries along the offensive line for the Rams as well. And that kind of nullifies that they're getting back Larrick Jackson, their left tackle off of suspension. So if we have all those offensive injuries, why in the world would we go with the over in this game? I just don't think the 49ers can move the ball well on this Rams defense. They just lost John Johnson for an extended period of time. So the defense is already getting shredded and now is losing a key piece there. The Rams through two weeks are dead last in early down pass defense. They're second to last against the rush and they look even worse when you account for the opponents that they played. The 49ers defense has played well, and they may be able to get some work in there as well. But it maybe that means that the, the 49ers team total is the better play in this game between instead of betting the full game total. But I do think that uh, that the 49ers can push this game pretty close to the total all by themselves. We haven't had McCaffrey in either game so far, but even just based on the 2024 data, the 49ers are second in my offensive power rankings for this year. Now, they did lose Debo Samuel, but they saw George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, Jordan Mason, and Trent Williams is healthy. We saw the Niners take a dip at one point last year when Debo is out, but Trent Williams also missed time during that span, and he is healthy right now. This game is indoors, which does help scoring too, so we are betting into cluster injuries, and that's often pretty foolish. I had the Rams money line last week. That did not go well, so maybe I'm dumb once again, but... I do think there is value in the over here. So my four bets that I like across NFL week number three are the 49ers Rams over 43 and a half and minus 115, taking the Ravens and Cowboys under 49 and a half and minus 115, laying one and a half with the Saints at minus 115 and laying six and a half with the Bucks at minus 115 as well. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Back with you once again tomorrow talking some college football with Kent Padgett. We'll also have a Thursday show at Dubs Anderson and a Wednesday or a Friday show with Megan Payton breaking down NFL week number three as well. To get those shows as they are posted, make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across any upcoming sporting events. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down college football week four. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. <laughs>